Mm. Hey, welcome, Pastor Chris Ireland here, and uh, welcome to the Poolside Chat. As I speak, there is a war, a battle going on with Israel, the Palestinians, and the Gaza Strip, which seems to be spreading to other Palestinian and Arabic groups. As you can imagine, I have had a lot of questions and comments, and I'm not going to answer some of the questions I got. A lot have to do with end times and revelation. Um, but let me give you a little background on the relationship between the Jews and the Arabs, two Semitic people from the same region. And maybe, maybe give you a little insight into some of the cruelty oh, that's being committed. Abraham, Father Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that Abraham, when he left his land and went to a land that God would show him, land of Canaan, said, this land will be for all your descendants. He was an old man. Hagar was an old woman. God promised that his seed would be no more numerous than the sea. Or the, excuse me, his seed would be no more numerous than the sands of the sea. And, uh, and he didn't know how this would happen. So there was a, an accepted practice at the time that if a woman was infertile, couldn't have children, then she could give her servant to her husband and carry on the descendancy through the servant. It was a practice of the time. And it sounds really strange to us, but you gotta remember, there was no social security. Once your husband died, if you didn't have children, you were a beggar. You were at the mercy of people's goodwill. So children, descendants, relatives were your social security. So Sarah, knowing God's promise, gave Hagar, her servant, to sleep with Abraham, her husband. And Hagar had a child, Ishmael. This was not the promised child. And 13 years later, Sarah gets pregnant and has a son, Isaac, through who the promise of descendancy would come, the promise of God. When I say 13, later, let's just say later, because when Ishmael is a young teen, 13, it says that he was mocking Isaac. The word that's used, we don't really know, is called mocking or playing with. It has different connotations. But whatever Ishmael and Isaac were doing, Sarah didn't like it and told Abraham, get Hagar, and that boy out of here. This was like a death sentence. Well, Abraham loved his son Ishmael. So he gave them some provisions, sent them on their way. At 14, it says that Hagar is in the desert. They run out of water, they run out of food. She doesn't want to watch her son die. So she sends her son away and she sits and cries. And God heard Ishmael cry and he took care of them. Hagar saw water, and you have the descendants called the 12 princes come out of Ishmael. Now what's interesting about this is Ishmael was circumcised, covenant of God, symbol of the covenant, just like Abraham and Isaac. And when Abraham died, Ishmael and Isaac attended to their father's funeral, Abraham. So, there was a love between the father of the Jews, Abraham, and the father of the Arabic peoples, the Palestinians, the Jordanians, the 
Iraqis, the uh, Iranians, you know, there was a love there. There seemed to be some kind of respect from Ishmael to Abraham, the father of the uh, Jewish state. But they were opposites. Jewish state, Arabs. They went on two separate paths. They both became great peoples. But there was always a conflict between the two, the Arabs and the Jews. And we see that conflict carrying on to this day. And that's kind of the history of where the two peoples came from and why they're both Semitic and why they have similarities, similar stories, beginnings. So there was always that conflict and we can see that through our lifetime, through history and even today. And as far as the cruelty, what my mind kept going back to, and there might be something there, just because you have conflict doesn't mean you have to be cruel. But Jeremiah, another prophet in the Bible, Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is evil above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And we can just... Look, we don't need to look over in Israel. We can look right here. I mean, what happened on the news a couple weeks ago? There were two kids, teenagers, um, older teenagers, but teenagers, who hit people just for the thrill of killing someone. We see, you know, I'm not going to go into that, but the cruelty... The lack of concern for others is all around us. And those of us who, I would dare say, follow God, can't understand that. But even with God, it says that our hearts are evil and desperately wicked above all things. And I think unless God takes that heart out of us and gives us a new heart, that's what's originally there. It sounds simple, and maybe it is that simple. But I know it's the best explanation I can come to that makes sense to me for why we're seeing this utter cruelty. There have been persecuted peoples all throughout the world. Heaven only knows, but not all of them have that cruelty. So this is just to give you a background and my understanding of how I make sense of what's going on right now. And I think it's important to understand where this Jewish Arab conflict started back with Abraham Isaac and Ishmael so that's what I wanted to share today uh, I might get to some of your questions on this because a whole bunch on the end times and I cannot deny it's certainly biblical prophecy certainly seems like it could be involved so I'll address these questions as they come up. Keep sending them to me. Uh, I didn't answer yours today. Don't be discouraged. I will. And, uh, and that's what I got. So guys, be encouraged. And uh, just remember, God takes that old heart out and gives us a new heart. When we follow him, it's not to say we won't be cruel. That's our nature. But God gives us that ability to recognize it and with his strength overcome it. And, uh, and if you, anyway, let me leave it there. Remember, uh, every Wednesday and Saturday on Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble at FL Compass Church. Be sure to check us out. 
Uh, don't be discouraged. Don't keep watching the news. If you're all involved in the war, remember to take a break from it. Uh, for me, I listen to 60s music. Don't judge me. My thing. Love you guys, and we'll see you Saturday.